watch it. Wow, weeks are flying by. So if you've watched these videos before, which you probably have, you'll probably know by now, I'm Dave Wood, and this, of course, is Semiosis 101. So if you want to, you can fast forward to today's video. But if you're a newbie, as usual, you stay exactly where you are. You stay with me. This is your first Semiosis 101 video. If that's the case, I'm Dave Wood, a design educator and researcher. I'm a published design author, and I've worked commercially as both a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. I actually use semiotics all the time in my creative work, but probably like yourselves, I was never taught semiotic theory at design school. I'm a Scouser from Liverpool and a new Scot, and this Scouse Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel focuses on explaining piercing semiotic theory in a more designer centric way to visual communication designers, illustrators, graphic designers. The guy behind the theory, Charles Sanders Peirce, was a philosopher, a mathematician, and a theorist but not a creative. I have a PhD in visual communication and it took until my doctorate to actually study semiotic theory in order to really understand how to apply semiosis, the act or sign action, when producing visual communication work. As a result, each week on this Scouse Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, I'll post at least one 10 minute explainer video on an aspect of Pierce's pragmatic semiotic theory. Each free Semiosis 101 10 minute video, we use designer centric terms instead of theoretical language so that illustrators and graphic designers can understand and follow. Each video will feature a take home piece of applicable semiotic theory and they do interconnect to build up your understanding of semiosis. But this channel, it's not a course of semiotics per se. Instead, each video is like a bite sized piece of illustrated new knowledge on sign action or semiosis as Peirce names it. The aim of these three videos is to take Peirce's quite complex philosophical theoretical language put in the context of designing visual communication, whether these are illustrations, motion, branding, packaging, editorial, etc. So whether you're just interested in semiotics or you are a semiotician, a visual communicator, an illustrator or a graphic designer interested in knowing how Peirce's semiosis theory can help to enhance your visual communication skills, then please like these videos subscribe to this channel below and if you want to be notified when next week's video hits YouTube hit the bell button let's get to the seventh episode on general piercing semiotic theory for illustrators and designers last week's video contextualized visual communication design with Pierce's theory of semiosis through gestalt theory it introduced the three levels of representation of a concept, icon, index, and symbol. Today, in around 10 minutes, we will go a little deeper into Peirce's language to begin to explain those terms in the context of semiotic sign action. This video is a, is a teaser to future videos where we will explore how Peirce's terms relate into visual communication creative practice. But today, we will explore what triads are and take the first sneak peek at Pierce's 10 semiotic sign classifications. We will see how Pierce's technical terms can be translated into designer friendly language and applied into our ideation to enhance the effectiveness of visual communication outputs. In this video, we begin this take back. So come and join me, subscribe, hit that bell button. Okay, so in this video, we're just going to explore a bit further the triadic nature of Peirce's semiosis. And just as a quick overview of this, if you come to this with uh, your only understanding of semiot semiotics being the signifier and signified, that comes from the Caesarian structuralist um, theory on semiotics, which is semiology which is dyadic in nature, which is basically the signified signified too. The whole of these videos that are on my channel are focusing on the pragmatic triadic nature of Charles Sanders Peirce's semiotic theory uh, of semiosis. Semiosis is a term he uses for how the sign action or the action of the sign works. And I find that it's a, it's a more useful term to explain semiotic theory in the context of visual communication design, graphic design, illustration, 
So that's the focus of where I'm coming from within this. As I said in previous videos, Peirce's philo uh, philosophy in regards to semiotic theory, which was written at the same time as, or ran right about the same period of time as Saussure's was, Peirce's North American Saussure's semiotic theory of semiology is European. Um, but Peirce is being pragmatic. It's more about the practical um, nature of how this works. And that is a lot more um, beneficial as a theory in design, in my argument for this, that the pragmatic nature of the action of how Peirce's semiotic theory works in a triadic nature, in, in a, a structure of threes, is really um, beneficial to visual communication designers, graphic designers, illustrators. But what is problematic is his language, which is very um, obtuse in regard to accessibility to 21st century designers. In his tragic nature of how the determination flow of how a semiotic sign works, he uses three terms, the object, its representament, and its interpretant which means absolutely nothing to designers. It may mean a lot to Persian semioticians but, and philosophers, but to designers, these three words are problematic. So the whole focus of these videos is to unpack these and re replace his terminology with more designer-centric terminology that is more accessible to visual communication designers, graphic designers, illustrators. So in previous videos, we've explored what this triad means. And as designer-centric terms, we've got it down to concept, replacing object, representation, re uh, replacing the Persian term of representament, and interpretation, replacing his term of interpretance. So these three terms are have come from workshopping the uh, the terminology from Peirce and uh, myself and a, a, a professor, Paul Cobley, a semiotician, uh, through a workshop we did with the Graphic Design Educators Network in 2018. These are three words that are more designer-centric that um, I now use to replace the terminology that has actually... Um, um, being used in Persian books and by Peirce himself. So these are more designer-centric terms. But in his uh, in Peirce's language, his triads have more depth behind them, not just the three that I've just mentioned there, but each of those three also has a triad inside of them, of theory, from simple to complex structures. Now, I'm not going to unpack what all of these strange terms mean to anybody in this video. They will be subjects for future videos because most of the videos in, in, in the following year will be mo mostly focused on the object side of things, the concept. How do you represent the context? But you can see here the problematicness of the terminology that only Peirce uses. So these are Persian words. He, he created these words to explain his theory, which is one of the barriers immediately to understanding his theory that as designers we need to overcome. And that's where my um, designer-centric research into how do we do that has led to these videos. So just very quickly, the, the main triadic nature of the, the determination flow is object representament interpretance, or in designer-centric terms, the concept, how the concept is represented, and how that representation of the concept is interpreted, which leads us back to the concept if interpreted correctly by our target audience. But within each of those levels, uh, our levels, within each of those, our levels, of complexity. So let's just jump to the two big problematic words, representament. There's three new words there, quality sign, sin sign, legi sign. All you need to know at this stage is that within how 
something is represented, Peirce defines three levels of complexity. How something is interpreted has three levels of complexity. So the three levels of complexity within the representament, qualisign is, the, is the, the basic level leading up to synsign and then eventually to legisign. We're not going to unpack them yet. They will be for future videos. In its interpretation, three words there. Only one of those, you might have a guess at what it means. But essentially what we have here is ream, dissent, and argument. From simple to complex. Simple, ream, dissent, middle, argument, high concept. I want to draw our attention now to where we start from, which is the concept, the object of why we are um, creating visual uh, semiotic signs to help our visual communication of the, uh, the concept, the, the intention behind the brief our client has given us that as designers, visual communication designers, graph designers, illustrators, uh, we do as our bread and butter work and that. Two words within his simple to complex structure that Peirce has used back in the 19th century, early 20th century, now in design has two different um, contextual meanings in design. And I want to straight away get you to have an open mind and not think that when we see icon and when we see symbol, it means anything to do with interface design, anything that you click on an interface to take us somewhere or whatever. What we will be unpacking in future videos is what these three terms mean to you. And in other videos coming up um, over the next few months, we will unpack them. To help us as visual communication designers get over our other understanding of what these terms mean, which is not what Peirce means, I prefer to use the, the terminology iconic, indexical, and symbolic rather than icon, index, and symbol. It's still problematic within those languages because iconic has a different meaning in society and symbolic has a different meaning in society. And indexical is one of those words it's like it needs to unpack further. So even in using those terms to get away from what we understand in design an icon is and what we understand in design a symbol is, to actually see it in a different context from a semiotic point of view, I'll use these other terms going forward in future videos. So the only thing you really need to think about here is the levels. And that's all you need at this point in time to consider. From simple to complex, in Peirce's theory, we start off with a very simple level of semiotic communication. Okay? And these are the ones that's highlighted in yellow. What this means, that's for future videos. But then the next level of how effective the communication is and how um, how that level of communication is crafted, you can see that these middle grounds help you become more focused on how to communicate. How that happens, that'll be for future videos. Can't do everything in 10 minutes. And then finally, the high level of communication, you can see here, is a symbolic level of communication. And within that, these other two terms he uses comes together. What, what does all this mean at this stage? Since I'm not you know, explaining in 10 minutes what all these strange terms mean. Well, in Pearson semiotic theory, through he was a mathematician as well as a philosopher. There's a lot of maths behind his um, is pragmatic theory to help explain science. That's one of the, the, the remits of Peirce's philosophy is how it can be applied to science. But we're not science, we're design, we're qualitative. But basically, just bear with me on this one, that Peirce defines 10 levels of semiotic signs from the very, very basic, simple at sign one to the very complex at sign 10. So in Persian semiotic theory, he defines 10 levels 
of signs in which the sign action is constructed between those three uh, triads of concept, representation and interpretation. But each of these are using the theory to enhance itself in different ways for different purposes from sign one to sign ten. Now I've purposely kept it simple at this stage but in the next few slides I'm going to show you and it's only to show you the complexity of Persian semiotic theory that over the coming videos I will translate into more manageable graphic design illustration contexts that you don't have to be a a professor in semi semiology, a, a semiotic professor, uh, to actually make any sense of this before you can actually use it. So I'm going to basically, in these videos, unpack all of these things over the coming years. Okay, so let's just have a quick look to see what all this means. Well, first of all, what we talked about before about the iconic signs, the very basic level of how to represent the concept are here in the purple. The next level up, indexical signs, are these uh, four at the bottom of this uh, inverted pyramid. And then the symbolic signs are the last three in this uh, 10 signs. So what all does this mean to you guys? Keep watching this channel to actually uh, get more and more of this information over the coming months. So that's our 10 minutes of Percy and Semiosis 101 for this week. This part one video of a, a two-parter introduces a big idea into the ongoing conversation. 10 types of semiotic sign, from very simple to very complex. Now these 10 signs are a big theoretical jump and should not be thought of as a, as a checklist or, or as a simplistic gradation that can be instantly selected and used as if they are just a, a different size set of spanners. After all, we are still in the realm of theory land here and not off the shelf ready to wear land. Where today's video takes us on our journey is to a place where we can view the exciting expanse of possibilities to apply semiosis into our creative practice. So, like any great adventure, we begin this exploration one wee step at a time. We ended today on iconic indexical and symbolic semiotic signs. Next week we will conclude the two parts with more context for the 10 signs and we will take small steps from then on to explore what iconic, indexical and symbolic semiotic signs are. You see, as creatives, you'll want to see how Pierce's semiotic theory of semiosis begins to reveal how it can enhance our visual communication skills. So there will be another video next week. Hit the bell button to be notified when it's published. Come back again. By following this Scout Scott YouTube channel, you will learn how Pierce's pragmatic semiotic theory of semiosis can help to enhance and improve how you visually communicate. Now, I have many more Percy and semiotic topics to discuss on this channel, but I would be interested in hearing about your semiotic ideas. Add a comment below. And if you like this video, check out my other semiotic videos and consider liking and sharing those videos with others. You see, the more we creatives discuss semiotic theory, the easier its application into our creative processes will be. Over the years, I've collaborated with other design academic researchers and Percy and semioticians to develop a designer centric explanation of Pierce's theoretical language. If you're interested in reading my semiotic Rosetta Stone academic writing, then you can visit my academia.edu link in the description. As a fellow creative and a published design author, I also have links in the description to my Scout Scott Redbubble shop, featuring illustrated and typographical GIF ranges. And also to my 2014 design book, published by Blue Tree Publishing. Interface design, an introduction to visual communication in UI design. Any other books on piercing semiotics I've mentioned in the videos are also listed in the description. Check them out too. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos, like and share them with your friends. And remember, 
hit the bell button to be notified when next week's video is published. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills. Thank you.